Hello, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel. Um, this is going to be my second review this week from um, from Wings Cockpit Figures. And uh, today we're going to be concentrating on this beautiful set here, which is a set of seven figures sculpted by Doug Craner. And these are a full crew in flight for the border model Dambuster Lancaster. So here we have seven figures in their sort of low altitude, not warm weather, not warm gear. Um, and they are all in the position just about to drop the bomb. So if you can imagine, you know, like the hatchet model that I'm doing, where it's sat on a diorama in the air, um, or like Carl's beautiful model where it's just dropped the bomb or whatever, these figures would suit that diorama beautifully, should you want to do it. So the, we have seven figures. Um, and as I say, they're at the moment of the bomb run to attack the dams. So we've got the pilot in the pilot seat, hands on the steering yoke. We've got the flight engineer standing alongside with his hands on the throttles. We've got the front gunner at his guns, seated in the nose turret. The bomb aimer lying prone with the triangular dam buster sight. We've got the navigator standing, watching the height spotlights through the cockpit blister to keep the bombing height altitude of 60 feet. And we've got the wireless operator sitting at his wireless, poised to send the successful failure message. And we've got the rear gunner in the tail turret. Now, I believe the rear gunner does come in the warm weather, you know, not the warm weather, the warm clothing with the, uh, the sheepskin around his neck and everything. If you want to get a set of these, uh, these are from Wings Cockpit Figures. Um, and you can see there, there is the contact details where you can get a hold of David. You can freeze frame and get that. Um, unfortunately, wingscockpitfigures.com no longer exists as a website, but he does have a Facebook page. You can get in touch on there. I think probably the best thing to do is drop him an email, david.allen at wingscockpitfigures.com. Um, a lot of people talk about the company is gone. Um, that certainly hasn't happened. And I know that he's got a massive back catalog. So any stuff that you've seen of his in the past, I'm sure if you get hold of him, I'm sure he'll be able to help you out some way or other. So the last review I did was this one here. And these were the three cockpit figures for the Hong Kong Models Kit. And these were dedicated um, to the Hong Kong Models Kit at the time. So we've got the, the bomb aimer there in his laying position. We've got the pilot here with his extended thighs to fit the Hong Kong model's extended seat. And then we've got the nose gunner there, designed specifically to go into the Hong Kong model's nose turret. Okay, so that's those there. Now the, the pilot and the front gunner are dedicated to the Hong Kong model's or the border model's kit. The, navigate, the navigator, the bomb aimer, is the same in both. So there, it, there's no specific... Um, kit recommendation for the bomb aimer it's just a 30 second scale Lancaster bomb aimer that will fit so I'll get this cleared up now so the Hong Kong model has a dedicated pilot and nose turret gunner the border model has a dedicated pilot and nose turret gunner now it's worth remembering that if you've bought the Robert Wazowski um, the beautiful uh, 3D printed set to update your Hong Kong models, or you've got any of the other seats available, or you've modified your seat to make it shorter so that it's more accurate. The border model pilot is the one you want to go for. The, um, as I say, the, the Hong Kong model's dedicated pilot in here has got the extended thighs for the longer seat. So basically, um, just make sure you get the right one for whatever you're building. Because if you use the Hong Kong model's pilot, on the border model seat it's going to look a bit funny with his knees away from the uh, the base of the seat vice versa the border model will not fit the hong kong model seat you have to shorten the seat to make it fit but the um the flight engineer the navigator the wireless operator the bomb aimer and the tail gunner are apparently all generic across uh, across both kits so you don't need to worry about which one you're getting now as i say this one here this is the dam busters set so they're not in their warm gear um, there is another set on the way, which David has told me he's going to send me um, as soon as it's available. And that is a full flight, you know, full warm suit for the um, for the for the border model, normal Lancaster. So you'll have again, you'll have the seven figures, but in this time, they'll all be um, wrapped up warm. So for the high altitude bombing runs. So that will be seven figures. I believe the rear gunner is generic across both because the rear gunner is always wrapped up warm, obviously, because he has nothing to keep him warm, sat at the back of the plane all on his own. 
Uh, of course, the other model we have to talk about, and I've got a couple of parts here, is the Hachette um, Dambuster Lancaster. I'm sure there are people going to want to put figures in there because that model is just laid on a stand dropping a bomb. So I'm sure you're going to want to put figures in there. The bad news is the Hachette Lancaster, the nose turret, there is no room in there whatsoever for a figure, as you can see. You could quite possibly cut a figure about but the thing is these guns if you want to have the flashing guns there the wiring's in the way um the, the guns there's not a lot of room in the middle but you i suppose you could actually just use a generic figure and put a head and shoulders in there or something so it looks good but um unfortunately i don't think there's any way you're going to get any of these gunners to fit i've got the pilot seat here which yes if you're into your accurate scale modeling the harness isn't the best um, but I'm going to build another one of these. I've got another one to do and I'm going to modify it with a nice harness and everything. And that'll be coming on the channel shortly. But we're going to see, I think the, um, the border model pilot will fit lovely in that seat. So that could also be another cure for you doing your, um, you know, having to mess with the belts. You could just take these belts off and stick that figure on. So let's have a look what we've got in here. So we've got the, we've got the pilot, bomber pilot. We've got the bomb aimer. Very nice. We've got the front gunner. We've got the wireless operator. We've got the flight engineer, as you can see, he's standing or he's sort of perched on his on the edge of his seat. We've got the rear gunner. And finally, we've got the navigator. All come in a nice box like that. The cost of these, um, I'm led to believe, is roughly £15 each. Now, today is uh, the 21st of March 2024. So if you're watching this like in 2028 or something, I expect the prices will have gone up. Um, so basically, we've got our seven figures there. So let's have a look at them one by one. I've got to make sure I don't get them mixed up because it's easy to mix the, the arms up with different figures. So here we have the wireless operator. Anyway, let's, let's do them in, in an order front to back. So let's do the uh, the front gunner. Here we go. So here's the front gunner. He's out there on his own, perched out in the front. So the front gunner is here. And as I say, this is dedicated to the border models kit. So make sure if you're doing the HK models, make sure you get the HK models one. So here we have the front gunner. So this is a three piece kit. So we've got the head and torso with legs um, sat on gunner seat. We've got two arms with gauntlet hands and the gun triggers. So we have the actual main body there with the head molded in one and we have two arms with hands and gun triggers. So here you can see absolutely gorgeous, beautiful sculpting, absolutely stunning, beautiful figure. Excuse my nails guys, I've been working on my horrible old scabby Volkswagen Passat trying to get it running and I've tried to scrub them clean but to no avail and I bite them which is disgusting so I'm sorry about that. But anyway you can see here we have the seat, okay, the seat is actually moulded in as one with the uh, with the figure. And you can see we've got some uh, mould plugs there and we've got some mould plugs there. So we'll have to remove them and sand them down. Uh, but it looks like he sat there with his feet just dangling. Um, as I mentioned when I did the Hong Kong models, apparently so that the gunner didn't kick the back of the head of the bombing all the time. Because, of course, in a standard B1B3, the front gunner was the bomb aimer. He did the same job. So in this situation, the bomb aimer was led with the front gunner attacking the, the um, defence on the dams. So apparently they put stirrups in for his feet, although we can't find any pictures anywhere of those stirrups. Um, so don't really know what to do about that one. But there we go. Um, one point was raised. Um, apparently they wouldn't have had the oxygen hoses uh, attached in the um in the raid so they probably would have still had the oxygen hoses on the mask but they wouldn't have been actually attached into any oxygenizers or anything or oxygen economizers um so bear that in mind when you're building your lancaster because it's it's low altitude uh they would have had a um a communications lead connected though so look out for that one but you can see here this is absolutely gorgeous you can see I mean, the detail on the back of that head it's just stunning it really is beautiful um, the harness detail and everything, absolutely gorgeous. Really, really nice. Well, it's harness around the lap on this one. I don't think he had shoulder harnesses in the um, in the front turret. But anyway, there we go. So there we are. Absolutely gorgeous. So that's our front gunner. His arms are here and they are actually holding the triggers for the gun. So 
leave the triggers off your gun and just put them in place. You can see they're designed to fit into those holes on the corners. So absolutely stunning. So we'll put that one over there, put him with his arms. What I'll do again, I'll put some pictures up at the end so you can look at these at your leisure in detail. So next guy we're going to have is the bomb aimer. Now we won't make too much fuss about this one because you've already seen it. It's the same as the Hong Kong models one. Um, I'm actually a little bit concerned here now. I'm wondering, have they actually put shoulder harnesses on there? I don't think they have. I'm sure they haven't. Where's the pilot? No, I don't think they have. Um, no, I don't think they have. Because the gunners certainly didn't have shoulder harnesses. They just had a lap belt. Um, so here we have our bomb aimer. So we've got BM and BA. Um, so we've got lots of arms here. So we have an arm with the hand holding the triangular bomb sight. Draw that out and put a couple of pins in it. Okay, so that's that one. And then we've got the... So that's his right arm. And then here we have another right arm. And that one is going to go on there. Like so. So that one will just be resting. So if you are Johnny Johnson, you're doing... Um, I've forgotten it again. <laughs> keep forgetting it uh, but if you're doing that one which is T then um, basically they didn't use the triangular bomb site and there's also other ones where they apparently had the lines on the um, on the nose blister and they apparently had a string around the back of their head something like that so whichever one you're doing you can actually set up for what you want to do so you can have his arm like that reached out with the with the bomb site a little triangular bomb site in the front or you can have him just leaning like that Okay, so very nice indeed. And then you've got the head here with the oxygen mask, with the tube and everything. So there we go. You have to make your own mind up what you're going to do for accuracy and stuff. But there we are. So um, I'm guessing that the straps they've got on here um, are actually for the for the parachute. I'm not sure. But, uh, there we go. So that's our bomb aimer, right? I'm sure a million people will comment regarding the straps, but I'm not a figures man, so I don't know anything about um, anything about the uh, what they would have had. Also worth bearing in mind, whenever you're doing any sort of resin kit, guys, you might see that and think, oh, I'll throw that away. Don't throw anything away, because what you see is like, like a throwaway piece might be a piece missing from the boot or something like that, or it might be part of the, the uniform. You just don't ever throw anything away. So the next one up, I guess, is going to be Flight Engineer. So the Flight Engineer is stood there, perched on his um, fold-away seat. Get those out of the way. He's perched on his fold-away seat, so he's just sort of resting, and he'll have his hands over on the throttle lever. So you've got four pieces. We've got the head, torso and legs, two right arms, two arms right, hand on throttles. Two arms, right hand on throttles. There we go. There should be a comma in there. So here's the uh, standing body. Of the, I'm sure now these are just straps because he certainly didn't have belts. Um, so there we go. So we've got the uh, we've got the um, the flight engineer there, and he stood next to the pilot. You can see the beautiful casting on there, beautiful sculpting, really really nice. The detail there, you can imagine seeing him through the side window. It's going to look stunning. You can see there is his bum's just flattened because he's just perched on the on the seat. And then he's got his uh, his right hand on throttles. So he's got his surely be left hand on throttles, will it? Not right. His left hand on throttles. Yeah, won't be the right hand. The right hand is going to be stretched out, leaning, I think, resting on something. Um, and you can see again, we've got his head here. Okay, and it looks like that has snapped off there. It looks like the oxygen tube is snapped. Um, and I'm not sure if it's a separate part, but uh, there you go. So this is border model flight engineer. That's what that means. Border model bomb aimer. Nothing on that one. Okay, so that's what that means. There you go. So the border model flight engineer. 
but if you wanted to, I'm sure the flat engineer could be used in the Hong Kong Models kit as well. So I'm sure it'd be uh, non-generic. So there we go. Absolutely gorgeous. Just show you that face again. It's stunning, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. It's getting a pat on the head there. It's <laughs> patting himself on the head. Right, and the next one's going to be the pilot. So again, this is dedicated to the Border Models or the Robert Rosowski set. So this one again, just like with the Border Model, the uh, Hong Kong Model, sorry, this one's coming with the control lever. I noticed on the Hong Kong Models one, the handbrake, the, the brake lever was missing. On this one, it's included. So it's, it's a nicer stick as well because it's been molded from the Border Model rather than the Hong Kong Models kit. But it's very, very nice. And you can see his hands are there um, gripping. Um, We've got a, some cleanup to do on there with those um, those mold plugs. But you can see the uh, the actual wheel itself is gorgeous. That just needs to be pulled out a bit. But, uh, put it in some warm water. Just pull that out, and that'll be fine. So there we go. So that's that with the hands. You can see there, which is stunning. We've got the main body of it itself. So there's the pilot's main body. You can see again. We've got the straps. And this time, yeah, we've got the additional straps there for the Sutton harness. So that is all good. Okay, you see the detail on the sides, detail on the back. Not the detail on the back is going to matter much because he's going to be sat in a seat. But that is um, absolutely stunning. Really, really nice. Again, noticed no, um, no thick sheepskin or anything around the neck. Beautiful, just got the, the polar neck jumper on, as you can see. Hello, Taiho. <laughs> now, I just want to see, I've got here, what I'm going to do is grab my cutters and I'm just going to remove the majority of these pieces. Lovely resin. Um, I know who casts these and he is a very, very professional caster and he's done an absolutely stunning job. So here is the hatchet models. Um, Lancaster and as you can see that pilot is a perfect fit okay now I don't know why he hasn't got his foot on the rudder pedals because he probably would have but um, I don't know his feet are just flat on the floor but that pilot is an absolutely perfect fit if you want to do the hatchet model so there you go now the control column is going to go in there. So if you bought this for the hatchet kit, I'm sure you'd be good to go because it looks like it's just absolutely perfect. So there you go. But uh, yeah, remove those belts and just put the pilot in. You have to extend the belts to go down to that, down to that little nub in there in the middle, which is where the belts were attached to. But uh, yeah, very nice indeed. So, um, cool. Now there's talk, there's debate about the parachute. Um, something I've read that the pilot of Lancaster's often had a cushion on the seat, and didn't use the sit on parachute because they were so uncomfortable to sit on for like that 10 hours or whatever they were. So um, apparently the pilot's parachute was often hung on the back of the seat. Now there are people that disagree with me on this and I've mentioned this one before. There is on YouTube a video where they're interviewing, um, they're obviously old videos now, but they're interviewing actual crew from Lancasters that went on actual missions. And there is one on there where they interview uh, an engineer, a flight engineer, and he physically says, in the event of an emergency, his first job was to grab the pilot's parachute and hand it to him. So that proves, just in that one statement, that proves that at least one pilot in World War II didn't sit on his parachute. So uh, a lot of people like to use the hollow seat at the bottom because they say the pilot always sat on his parachute. He didn't. He didn't always sit on it. Some I've seen pictures before where they've got a sheet of plywood attached to the back of the seat that they would hang the pilot's um, parachute on. There is also an image in the um, beautiful wing leader book on the early lengths of a pilot's parachute attached to the back of the seat. So they didn't always sit on them. Uh, you can carve this about and change it around or whatever you want to do. Um, maybe on this mission they did uh, sit on their parachutes, but um, interesting to see. But anyway, here's the uh, here's the arms, and you can see there we've got the holes, so we can fit the uh, we can fit the hands in there like that. So 
basically they will go into there very very nice indeed um, and then we've got the pilot's head there himself and he's just got the oxygen tube hanging down as I said they wouldn't have had the oxygen tube connected but they did keep their face backs on so they could communicate with each other because obviously they had to communicate because you had you had the um, the bomb aimer um, telling everybody what to do you have the uh, the pilot obviously telling people what to do you have the engineer telling people what to do and you had the navigator telling the pilot to go up or down or whatever so um yeah there you are it's a beautiful head lovely face fantastic sculpting stunning work really really nice it's got his goggles there as well thank you all to the comments as well for the uh, when i did this one i didn't know what those little things were and apparently they were sun visors like uh like glasses almost sunglasses for uh for the bright weather which we don't see much of in england at the moment unfortunately so there's the pilot which is absolutely stunning so next up we're going to have the navigator so navigators normally sat behind the pilot as you know behind the flight engineer but in this instance he stood up looking out of the blister looking down to see the lights come to form a figure of eight it's a slightly darker resin this one but um this guy is amazing look at this so the navigator stood there looking out the window imagine you're going to see that he's going to be stood there behind the flight engineer looking down I'm sure they've got his head looking down yes they have his head's looking down oxygen tube hanging down and he's looking down through the blister on the side so he'll be in there like that looking down there looking out the window <laughs> to see the um to see the um to see the two lights so he'll be telling the pilot up down up down up down and then he, I'm guessing his arms will just be re leaning on the side where he's looking out, I'm guessing. It certainly looks that way. So, uh, so yeah, his right arm is going to be... Yeah, I guess he's leaning on the, on the frame around the top of the window there. So there we are. But the body, look at the sculpting in that. It's stunning. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful. So, you know, he hasn't he hasn't he hasn't sat on his parachute obviously. He's still got all the straps. Or the webbing should I call it. But, um, and he has got the uh, he has got the sheepskin jacket on. Beautiful. Look at this, look at the oh, it's just absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Looks like he's got high heels on there. Absolutely beautiful. And then again, another look at that face. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. I'm going to have to um, revise my uh, knowledge of the uh, bomber pilots or the uh, the bomber crews because I'm sort of looking at these straps and I'm wondering what they all do because they're all there with no parachute, you know. Um, yes. Next one is the wireless operator. This is five pieces. We've got the head, torso, with right leg, left leg, and uh, separate arms. And this this guy is seated. So this is our wireless operator. Well, see, so he's got a separate leg. I don't know why he's done that. So I'm guessing his leg's going to be sticking out in the gangway. And his other leg's going to be underneath the table. I don't know why they've moulded his leg as a separate piece. Very strange. Fits beautifully. I wonder why they've done that. Okay, and then here we have him. Again, that one's broken off there as well. Here we have him just looking forward, uh, and he's got his finger. He's got his right hand down on the trigger, ready to send the signal. So he will be like that with his right hand down on the bench, ready to send the signal. So again, fantastic casting, beautiful work around those boots. You can see his polar neck there. Really, really nice. These are a must for anybody who doesn't want to do an in-flight diorama, I think. Or even just have them sat on the ground. But, um, and of course, you don't have to buy the full seven sets. So if you want to just do the, the nose, 
and you want to do some scratch building or whatever and, and turn it into a dam buster then you could buy six of these and have them all stuffed into that bot that border model nose you could imagine that would make a beautiful little model so there we go so another quick look really really nice and then finally, we've got that poor old guy out the back, stuck there on his own, out the back. We've got the rear gunner, and uh, this is uh, seven pieces. We've got two heads, torso with legs, two arms, and two gauntlet hands with triggers. Now, I'm led to believe by David that apparently this is generic for the, um, this is for the Hong Kong models or the border model. So uh, you're also going to have a spare head. So you might want to use this head on one of the other figures or whatever. So this is one head with goggles. Okay, and one head without. Um, and they also have different types of masks on if you look. So check your references. Um, just looking at these. These all have the lower type mask. So I don't know why the rear gunner would have a different mask. But obviously, as I say, this this is made for both high altitude and low altitude missions. So it could be that this is low altitude and that's high altitude or vice versa. Um, I'm sure a lot of people will tell us in the comments below because there's a lot of people out there that watch my videos that are very, very knowledgeable on this stuff. Especially people like Steve, who's a, a fantastic figure painter or figure modeler. Um, but it's just... I can't believe it's it's just exquisite this sculpting it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and you can see there he's got his big thick sheepskin collar there around him absolutely stunning beautiful beautiful work and then here we've got two arms so both left and right arms obviously very cramped in there and then we've got two hands left and right both holding the triggers okay now obviously i don't have a rear turret for the hatchet model yet because it hasn't come out yet but um i doubt very much if this will fit in there because if there's anything like the front turret then there is just simply no room um something i did want to look at well we've got some separate heads um you probably would fit a head in there somehow because it'll physically go between the guns but when you actually look at the shoulders um you know i'm not sure exactly how low they sit but uh it's going to be a very very tight squeeze you may be able to make it work but, um you know with some carving about or whatever but uh it's going to be very very tight but, um you know if you want to get it in there you're going to get it in there but it just means you might have to do some adjustments and Put a couple of grooves in for the wires to run through or something or just lose the the flashing guns and get rid of the wires completely it's up to you but uh yeah very very nice indeed so that has been a review of this uh beautiful set and as i say for those of you who are not dam buster fans but you just want to build an ordinary b1 b3 um border models like then this set again will be coming out for for that purpose so there we are i hope you've enjoyed that um i just want to say a couple of things as i've already mentioned be careful of the dedicated parts and make sure you're ordering the right thing um david has given me some tips uh basically number one dry fit is key dry fit dry fit dry fit make sure you dry fit absolutely everything um and you're going to have to paint as you go particularly with the like the, i mean the pilot you'll be able to probably dummy it, build it up, take him out, build up your cockpit and then drop him in afterwards. But your actual, um, like your, gur your, your turret gunners and that, uh, there's no way you're going to build one of them up and then get it in. So you're going to have to paint and build as you go and, you know, hide your joints and everything. But uh, I'm sure you'll get around it. Saying that, I really don't know why that leg is separate. That seems very strange. Um, very strange indeed. There's probably a reason for it. That maybe there's something in the model that you may want to use or not use or something. But um, yeah, and then the third one is, um, this is the one people are going to hate. Unfortunately, uh, these will be available to be posted from David um, in England, Wales and Scotland only. He will not ship abroad. 
Um, I know why, as I said before, this is basically what happens. Shipping costs a fortune. Okay, Anywhere in the world, shipping costs a fortune. People don't want to pay the massive shipping cost to have it sent to America or Australia or whatever. So you ship it. The item gets lost. Royal Mail do not cover the, co the cost of your goods. They only cover the cost of the shipping. So then basically David's then got to make another set and send them. And of course, the other thing then is you get people complaining and everything because of the huge customs costs. So basically a lot of people now won't ship abroad for those very reasons because stuff gets lost and then they have to send it again. They end up paying for the shipping twice. People don't want to pay for the expensive shipping. Item gets lost. It's not insured. The seller is responsible for actually replacing it. And then you've got the VAT thing, which is, a, which is a real pain. And people say, would you please put a low value on there? Yeah, that's great. I can send you this. It's worth 100 quid, say, and I can put on the box 20 pounds. But if it gets lost, it's only insured for 20 pounds. So, you know, it's, it, the seller is the loser every time in this situation, I'm afraid. So that's why he doesn't ship abroad. So what you have to do is find a, a Facebook club member or something, someone in the UK or someone in England, Wales or Scotland and get them to buy it and send it for you. Um, that's the best way to do it. But you're going to have to have an agreement with that friend that if it does get lost, it's your loss. Because uh, unfortunately, I've experienced in the past, I've sent stuff insured. Um, and if you're a company, it's a different story if it's a business. But if I sent you for your birthday, if I sent you... Um, you know, some resin wheels for your Lancaster and they're worth £25. I can put on there a value of £25. It's insured for £25, but because it was a gift, I have no invoice. I can't claim it back. I could only claim back the postage. So, and there's going to be people down below that are going to argue this. I've experienced it on more than one occasion and I'm afraid that's the way it goes. Okay, so there we go. Right. Uh, I think the best thing to do is use a courier and then you pay even more money again. So there we are. Right, so thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, as I say, if you want to get in touch with David, I'll put the details up there again. There you go, that's on his, uh, on his flyer. So um, there you go, that's how you can get hold of him. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you all soon. And um, take care and happy modelling. This is worth having, I tell you. Really, really nice.